The strawberry industry in Australia is in crisis. Just over a week ago, a man in Brisbane ate a strawberry and was admitted to emergency with abdominal pain. It turned out that the strawberry had a needle in it, a piece of which he had swallowed. Later, more needles were found and Queensland Health began an investigation. A couple of brands, Berrylicious and Berry Obsession, were found to be implicated in the contamination. It was initially stated that the perpetrator was probably a disgruntled employee, a lone wolf seeking revenge on the industry that has wronged him. However, now that there are more than seven brands involved, Berrylicious, Berry Obsession, Donnybrook Berries, Loveberry, Delightful Strawberries, Oasis Brands, and Mal's Black Label, this is obviously more than the actions of a lone wolf. Police claim that there may be copycats at work. The Queensland Government has issued a $100,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest of the person responsible. For some reason, they keep acting like there's only a single individual at work here. Western Australian farmers have been forced to dump tons of strawberries despite local growers not being affected. Until today, that is. Customers are simply not buying strawberries anymore. Consequently, the big supermarkets have no other option but to cancel orders. Although the media and the government are claiming that this is probably the work of one or two evil people, I have a theory that this goes a lot deeper than they are making out. I theorise that this is a system-wide problem. What we are seeing now is simply a symptom of a much greater issue. Call me crazy, but I think this has to do with the systematic exploitation of foreign workers in the strawberry industry. I don't mean to pick on the strawberry industry. There are many other industries in Australia that systematically exploit foreign workers as well, usually ones where jobs involve low pay and manual labour. My wife, who is Chinese, has had first-hand experience with exploitation as a foreign worker in Australia. Strawberry farms have been slowly replacing all of their staff with foreign nationals. As an example, a couple of months ago it was reported that a strawberry farm in Bundaberg posted a job ad online looking for Asian workers only. They have since changed the ad only because there was a bit of a public outcry. But do we really believe that they have changed their underlying hiring policy? Just because a few people got angry on Facebook, are they really going to suddenly start hiring expensive Australians? Probably not. Other people have claimed that the industry has been underpaying workers for a number of years. There are claims that one farm employed about 500 workers, 300 of which were from India, 190 were Koreans, and only about 10 were Australian. Some workers were only being paid as little as $5 a day. Other people blame Australians for not wanting to do back-breaking manual labour, resulting in farmers being forced to only hire foreign nationals. My guess, however, is that it's not about a lack of Australian workers, but a necessity to find cheaper labour. The average Australian is not willing to get underpaid to do a boring, laborious job. As usual, it all comes down to money. The big supermarkets in Australia have a lot of clout when it comes to influencing the price. If they want to buy cheaper goods, they can pretty much bully the producers into submission. We've seen it in the milk industry with dollar a litre milk. Either strawberry farmers accept the price, or they go broke. Consequently, farmers must find ways to cut costs. This usually involves hiring migrant workers who don't really know their work rights. Consequently, we end up with some of them only getting paid $5 a day. Once these workers wake up and realise that their Australian dream has turned into an Australian nightmare, some of them might just seek out revenge on the very industry that has aggressed them. And I think that's exactly what is happening with the ongoing needles in strawberries disaster. The police are probably right in saying that it's a disgruntled worker. But they should probably go further and change it to disgruntled workers, simply saying that it's an evil lone wolf with no regard for small innocent children and then offering a $100,000 reward is not going to solve anything. The underlying issues will still exist. We have consumers who don't want to pay the true cost of strawberries. We have supermarkets who pressure the producers to drop their prices. We have farmers who are forced to find ways to cut costs, resulting in foreign workers getting paid dick all to toil in the fields under the burning sun just so that we can buy a punnet of strawberries for $1.50. But what can the industry do? If the supermarkets insist on a certain price, then they either meet that price or leave the industry. If the Australian government decided to intervene, just say they said, right, 
All fruit pickers must be paid a minimum hourly wage. Well, my guess would be that a punnet of strawberries would no longer cost $1.50, but would probably shoot up to $10 or more. It wouldn't work. The industry would collapse. However, if we keep going the way we are going and allow the producers to underpay their staff, then we'll forever be caught in a loop of low prices and spiteful workers. Inevitably, we'll have workers wishing to seek revenge on an industry that has treated them like modern-day slaves. Needles in strawberries is but a consequence of the exploitative system that we have allowed to prosper. But just to change the course of this conversation a little, I have one prediction. The industry will eventually replace human workers with robots. If you think I'm joking, take a look at the article that I've posted a link to below, A Glimpse of the Future. Experts take first steps to create robot strawberry pickers who could end the need for humans toiling in fields. So realistically, there are only a couple of outcomes. We continue on the path of underpaid foreign workers and cheap strawberries, knowing that this comes with the risk of sabotage and revenge as we are currently seeing unfold. Or, technology is introduced, robots, etc., keeping the prices low, but leaving the migrant workers without a job. The government could step in and force proper pay for all workers, but I just don't see this happening. Consumers love cheap goods, and the supermarkets and the industry know this. In the meantime, I guess we just have to accept the fact that there's a little bit of risk involved in buying cheap strawberries. Personally, I'm not going to be buying any as most of them will end up in my children's lunch boxes, and I don't really need the school ringing me and telling me that my son has swallowed something metallic. No thank you. I'll wait until all this mess is sorted out. But just to finish on a light-hearted note, I've come up with a couple of new strawberry brand names. Berry Armful, Berry Painful, and my personal favourite, Berry No Needle. Cheers. <laughs>